Hello friends, welcome to this video. In this video, we will define few maps and try to see a relation between a new map and the maps we have already learned. The new map is nothing but a translation map or it is also known as a slide map. Okay, so what is a translation map? Given any plane P, a translation of P by a vector V is nothing but P plus V. That means I will add V, the vector V, inside every element of P. And if I talk precisely about translation map, then it is a function TW for a fixed element W inside V. TW from V to V, where V are a finite dimensional in a product space over R, such that defined as my TW of X is nothing but X plus W. That means in every element, we are just adding W into it, a fixed vector W into it. This map is called as a translation map or a slide map. Okay. The homework or I say exercise for the student will be to show that is it a linear transformation or not. If yes, prove it. If no, try to think when it can be a linear transformation. Means try to construct some cases and trying to find out a condition after which a translation becomes a linear transformation. Okay. So student have to prove this theorem also. This is a really trivial theorem. By the definition, you can prove this three uh, parts. So I think you guys will do. If you are not able to do, just write in the comment box. My next video will be the proof of this three theorems. Okay, three uh, statements. Okay. But for now, till now we know three maps. One is orthogonal transformation. Second was an isometry that is distance preserving map. And the, today we learn what is called as a translation map. So we know an orthogonal transformation is a linear transformation. Isometry may or may not be a linear transformation. And the one which we learn, translation, I will tell you it is not a linear transformation. Okay. So this three maps has a relation between them, a beautiful relation between them. The relation is given any isometry, I can write that isometry as a composition of an orthogonal transformation and a translation. That means the statement of the theorem will be this. Okay. So our claim to prove this. So I request student to pause the video and write down the statement. We'll prove this. Okay. Okay. So let's see the proof. So they have given G from V to V is a uh, we consider it to be isometric. I want to prove this J is nothing but composition of an orthogonal transformation and a translation. We already have some relation between isometry and orthogonal transformation, right? That was our last theorem. The theorem state that an isometry preserving origin is an orthogonal transformation. We are going to use that theorem over here. But for now, let me see let my where the origin goes. Right? It, it might goes to 0 or it might goes to some other number. Let it go to A. Where A is an element of V. It might be 0. If it is 0, it becomes uh, orthogonal transformation. But suppose it is any gen in general case. Means it might be 0, it might not be 0. We will proving in general. So my G of 0 that it, at origin it is going to Z A. Then we will use this A. What we will do? We will define my F from V to V as my F of X is same as my G of X minus A where A is nothing but my J of Z. Okay. So our claim to prove my this F is nothing but an orthogonal transformation. If I prove it is an uh, distance preserving and preserves origin that is it is isometry preserve origin then it automatically becomes an orthogonal linear transformation. So my first claim is uh, claim 1 F is orthogonal okay so I will prove it in a two part that is first I will prove it preserves the distance second I will prove it preserves the origin so for the first case what I consider is norm of f of x minus f of y okay by the definition, it is same as norm of f of uh, so f of x is same as g of x minus a. 
then minus f of y is same as g of y minus a. Correct? That is same as g of x minus a minus g of x plus a. I can cancel this too. So I will get, uh, over here it is y. Over here it is y. So it is norm of g of x minus g of y. Where we know g is nothing but an isometry. That means it preserves the distance. That is nothing but this is same as norm of x minus y. Implies me. We started with this. We ended with this. Implies me f is an isometry. Correct? Now I will consider my f of 0. Okay? If it is isometry preserving origin, it becomes orthogonal linear transformation. So considering f of 0. That is nothing but g of 0 minus a. Also we know that my g of 0 is equal to a. This implies this is equal to 0. Therefore f is an isometry preserving preserving origin. Implies me f is an orthogonal transformation. Okay, so this way is really simple. Otherwise, what student can do by the definition, they have to uh, show that it is preserving norm. It is uh, yes, and they also have to prove it is a transformation. So that become a bit lengthy. You can use this theorem. Okay, so now we I know that my f is an orthogonal transformation. We require one more thing. We want a translation also. So let me define after this. I will rub this all part. Okay. Okay, so after this, I'll rub this also claim. Let's see my second claim. Uh, now, what I do, I define one more map. Define T from V to V as my T of X is nothing but what? I know I got an isometry. I got an orthogonal transformation. Left is translation. So I will define it X plus this A. This A, G of 0. So my T of X is equal to X plus A. This is nothing but a translation. Now what I want? I want to prove my G is nothing but composition of this F and T. Okay. So let me consider F composite T. Consider F composite T at the point X. It is same as T of F of X. That is same as T. What is F of X? F of X is same as G of X minus A. What is T of anything is nothing but adding A to it. It is just a translation adding that constant A. So it is G of X minus A plus with A. That is same as G of X minus A plus A. That is same as G of X. This is true for all X inside V. right? That means my T composite F at X is same as G of X for all X inside V. This implies me my T composite F is nothing but equal to G. My isometry is nothing but composition of an orthogonal and a translation. Correct? So this completes the proof. It was really simple. Interesting proof also and important also. Okay. So I think this is enough for this class. In the next class, we'll be seeing one more theorem. After that, we'll go for a rotation and reflections. Okay. For any doubt, any difficulty, write in the comment box. I will try to reply as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you.